Oh dear, oh. XMP is not a guarantee. Yeah. It sometimes may work, sometimes may not. Ah. Oh, <laughs> bang. Okay guys, welcome to Real Mountain. So, I'm a beginner overclocker. He's a pro overclocker. <laughs> nah. In this video, we're going to see if a beginner can actually match a pro when it comes to RAM overclocking. Let's find out. I think you flatter me too much. Okay guys, this is our overclocking corner. Both have Typhoon system monitors. Thank you Typhoon Systems. <laughs> Both are using the Core i5 11.4F. Initially wanted to use something even better, but things happen. <laughs> things happen. <laughs> we had to call for last minute help and that's why we have this 11.4F. Special thanks to the guys at PC team bailed us out on this. Yep. Thanks. Okay, but the rest of it is all kindly sponsored and brought to you by MSI. Thank you MSI. GPUs, we have the RTX 3070 Ti on the left hand side and the 3080 Ti on the right hand side both are Supreme Access. We'll get the motherboard in a while because that's a special part. The RAM we have both GSQ Flare Access. Not too crazy for this overclocking session. We just want to show you how it works and what kind of fun. So Flare X is the best budget to go for right now. Actually for us at Typhoon System, Flare Access are our default go-to RAM. If you are to order a set from us and if you specify just normal RAM, this is what you're gonna get. So the ones that we have here are 16 gig, 3200 megahertz CL16. Yep. Okay, so the main point right here are the motherboards. Because he's the pro, he decided to give an advantage so he's using the four slot msi b560 tomahawk i'm giving him the advantage by giving him the two slot itx motherboard b560 gaming edge yeah because if you guys do not know in overclocking if you have two slots it's actually better for overclocking than four slots yeah which is the reason why you see most of those top end overclockers yeah. only have two slots yeah, that's why okay <laughs> before we get to competition we're going to show you what is this memory try by msi to see how you can overclock your RAM easily. Let's go. First off, I'm going to set benchmark by which uh, Mel has to beat. Both of them we've reset back to stock BIOS settings. The only change that we've done so far is that we have slapped XMP profile number one. It is actually now at 3200 megahertz, CL16, 18, 18, 18, 38. Most other motherboards to do quite a fair bit of trial and error. And when I mean by trial and error, if they're too aggressive and overclock that your processor or your motherboard can't support whole stable, you'll probably end up in a situation where the board just doesn't pose and you have to completely reset the BIOS itself. However, MSI has created this thing called memory try. What I'm going to do now is that instead of using the DRAM frequency, this is for when you kind of know what setting really works than these. So we're going to do this. Let's say... Okay, so 4400 CL19. I don't think this is going to work, but if it works, it's going to be a miracle. DRAM timing mode, link, unlink. Okay, if you link them, when you set all the timing, it applies to both the DIMMs here. However, if you select unlink, you can actually adjust both of them individually. There may be certain situations, for example, one of them is not quite as overclockable as the other, so unlink command comes in handy. But for now, I'll leave them link. So you can see it's dialed in CR19, 25, 25, 46. Yep, it's not working because jumping between the CPU and the DRAM light. The orange light is DRAM, the red light is CPU. So right, you can see right over here, memory overclocking has failed. So as you saw just now, I was a little bit too ambitious. Let's tone down our expectations a bit. For memory try what it does, if it fails after a set amount of time, it'll just throw you back into the BIOS. And you can see my DDR speed now is 2400 megahertz. Why? Because 3200 G skill Flare X, their JDAC timing is 2400 megahertz. So they'll default back to the JDAC timing. Try a little bit more sensible. More conservative. Yeah, conservative being relative. <laughs> <laughs> this one's CL18, so let's go with this. What you can see here is the command rate is set to auto. CL is set to 18, the other timings are 22, 22, 40, and the rest have been left on. DRAM voltage has been set to 1.4. Let's give it a go. Hmm. Yeah, the operating system loads. So CPU-Z is a very useful tool. It kind of shows you all the little vital statistics of your cell. And here we go. We have our memory. So SPD shows you all the different things like the JDAC profiles, 1, 2, 0, 0. So 1, 2, 0, 0 times 2, 2, 4, 0, 0. Then you see this is the XMP profile. That means if you enable XMP, this is what you're going to get. 1.35 volts, 1, 6, 0, 0 times 2, 3200, CL16. If you come to here, however, you'll see that it's actually now 200 megahertz DRM frequency times 2, 4,000. So, getting into Windows for you to be able to see this is one thing. Now for the moment of truth, is this a stable overclock? So we shall invite our nasty little friend down here, Ida64. And we're gonna run a minute to see whether it crashes. Because we're only gonna test system memory, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's give it a minute. 
Because usually for RAM overclocked, for IDA 64, if the overclock is very unstable, it will usually crash within like the next 10 to 20 seconds. You'll see this flashing red. But if you don't see it after about a minute or so, you should be pretty fine. But you may probably want to test it for longer than that. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to show you it's for a minute. Final 10 seconds. Final 10 seconds. So it seems like, yeah, we somewhat have a quite stable overclock. 4000 CL 18. See if you've seen the price difference between a 3200 CL 16 and a 4000 CL 18 kit, the price difference can be quite substantial. But let's see if we can get a little bit more out of this fella. So 4400 was totally impossible. 4266. CR18. So we see the advanced DRAM configuration 1822 2242. If we leave it at 1.4, it may or may not pause. I'm going to buy an increment of 0 0.05. So instead of 1.40, I'm going to go to 1.45. DRAM light, this is not look. Okay, it's not going to work. And again, you can see the JDX speed has reset to 2400. We're still going to stick with the timing profiles on the memory try it, but I'm going to adjust the voltage here a bit. Generally speaking, for DRAM, I would not advise anything above 1.5 to 1.6. This time around, we're just going to see whether this actually works. If it works at 1.55, we'll try to dial it down to the lowest value that we can actually get it to work. So we've got to try 1.55 first. If it doesn't work at this point, then we give up. Okay, it actually goes past. Oh dear, oh. I think we'll probably just stick it at 4000CR18. Okay, it's not bouncing back. Okay, good. We have uh, 3200CR16 SK Hynix. In actual fact, this is as far as we've gotten it stable. 4000 megahertz, CR18. So now, it's up to Bell to beat this. Alright, so now it's my turn to match first the 4000 megahertz CL16. Let's go for that. Okay, let's start off with something very conservative. Let's go with 3600 CL16. These are the timings 16, mm. 20, 20, 38. Alright. Okay, so press F10. I mm. believe the 3600 is supposed to be easy. So if it doesn't work, something is wrong. It's a DRAM light right now. Although just now the voltage may probably have been a bit too low. It was stuck at 1.35. Yeah, so okay. it may or may not work. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, probably we need to increase a bit of voltage. Yeah, I think you need to bump up the voltage. 1.35 mm. is a bit too low for 3600. Mm. Because I've seen a lot of 3600 uh, CL16 kits, even though the XMP profile says 1.35, they sometimes can jump between 1.35 and 4. Is it normal that it resets 3 4 times like that? You know, just try to start and start and start the RAM, and if it doesn't work, then yeah, this is what's, this is what's gonna happen. Uh. Mm. Okay, this is one of those moments where the memory try isn't working as well as it should. Sometimes it does happen. So for MSI bots, what you can do is that in the default setting, when you do this, let's say for example, there are two sticks out here. Take out one. All right, uh, well, Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Yes. He's busy trying to rectify this thing on the Mini ITX. Somehow it's not starting out. Oh, it started up already. Yeah, it started up already. Okay, but before that, let's just talk about the memory try competition for MSI. So if I remember correctly, basically you have to validate your overclocking scores with CPU-Z, upload your motherboard, your CPU, and all the information that is on your CPU-Z onto the website. The link will be provided below as well as more information provided below. You can participate if you are from these countries. Okay, if you are very good at overclocking, make sure to join this competition. Third prize, you get to win AIO from MSI. Second prize will be a gaming chair. And if you are truly, truly, truly good at overclocking, you can stand to win the MSI gaming monitor, the Optics. What's the number again? MAG. 274QRF-QD Quantum Dot 4040p Gaming Esports Monitor. So, if you want to win that, make sure to join the competition, send your best scores, and hint, you will do much better if you use a 4-slot motherboard instead of a 2-slot. Gordon is uh, preparing for this. <laughs> so, now let's go on to back to the competition between the both of us. I've opened up these two windows so that our audience can take a look. Well, if we come to memory, one is zero, thumbs two. 3600, 16, 20, 20, 38. Yep, yep. Well, mm. you want to know the reason why I succeeded and you failed? Yeah, because he pushed the voltage. Yes, it's voltage. <laughs> it's all a matter of voltage. So what I've done instead of just now 1.35, I set DRAM voltage to 1.4. Let's test to see whether this overclock actually is stable. Fire up, Ida. 
Ah, ah, this is not stable. Okay, so means we probably need slightly more voltage. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Anyway, if you're wondering, this is our 240Hz monitor that we reviewed the last time. Mm -hmm. So if you want, you can check out the video in the link above. If you want to keep it at CL16. Actually, why don't we just jump straight to 4000? Yeah, let's uh, not waste time. Let's try to match what this guy is doing. Okay, let me guess. Uh, uh, 1.5. It's running 1.5. Yeah, on this board. Yeah, let's on this board. So we we'll probably have to dial in 1.5. Yeah, yeah. Let's just start with something big first. Then we decide how to go from there. Yeah. Okay, seems pretty stable for now. Okay, it's not bouncing back. Okay, hmm? yeah, it switched to the VJ light. Okay, step That's one clear. Step one is clear. Step two. Okay. Yeah, step two clear. Yeah, 2000 times two, 4000 megahertz with our so CL18. You, it's also 4000 megahertz CL18 on this side as well. It's all right. All right. Hit start. Right now, it looks okay. Very promising. Yeah, very promising so far. Yeah, in case you're wondering, we are using stock coolers for <laughs> Intel Yeah, CPU. because we're not overclocking the CPU, we're just overclocking <laughs> the RAM. <laughs> Let's put it this way, we're not reaching the speeds where we need LN2 yet. Not like a certain crazy German fella and a guy that likes to do uh, 30 minutes of verbal diarrhea. <laughs> okay, yes, we are yes, all stable. We have achieved 4000 CL18. Yeah, so now both of these sets are now at 4000 CL18. Okay. But we have also seen that this guy, if we, we try to go to 4266, this guy's gonna crash. <laughs> so let's see if the ITX advantage comes into play here. Okay, if I'm not wrong, one of them has slightly more aggressive timing. Yeah, let's go for the easy one. This so we right. have 18, 22, 22, 42. So let's come out first. I'm curious, what is the more aggressive one? 18, 24, 24. Ah, okay, this is the oh, looser one. This is, this is a safer one. Yeah, it's showing red because 0.55 is pretty okay for RAM, but <laughs> well, 1.6 and above, you may be asking for trouble. Okay. Like, who's that guy, the verbal diarrhea? He does RAM at 1.5, but then again, uh, people are sponsoring him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if the distributor for g -Skill in Singapore is watching this video, please do not avoid the warranty. Yeah. Pretend you didn't see this video. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Step one clear. Ah, step two also clear. Yep. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, 2132, so times 2 is 4266. Yep. Okay. All right, moment of three, three, two, one. Like it. Uh, ah, mm. ah bang. <laughs> Since we are doing 1.6, let's just go to the full CL18 timings. Yeah, so this is why stress testing is important for memory overclocking. It loads into Windows 5, but the moment you do anything intensive, shit happens. Yep. Let's go to the bit more aggressive timing. This is where we need to see... 1.6. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's just go. Uh, we have lots of this RAM anyway. <laughs> Let's just hope the G-Skill guys are not watching this. <laughs> Do they want to sponsor us? <laughs> uh, that's another thing, topic for another video. Staining beach ball. Mm. Ah, okay. okay, I think at this point in time, you're probably going to drop things down to a couple of notches. 19, 26. Oh, okay. 26 and 46. Uh, we'll keep the voltage. All right. Okay, mm -hmm. we get past, it doesn't bounce back to the CPU light. Ah, nice. Okay, now the OS loads. Nice. Mm. Let's start. Mm. No. Back to BIOS. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is definitely not something I will recommend for day-to-day -day use. Yes, I know. Yeah, pick that one. This uh, one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Let's pump 1.7. Yeah. Yep. I managed to get one kit up to 4400 CL19, but that was a 3600 CL16 kit. Yeah. Actually, I think you know what? I think we'll keep it at 4000 C. I'm beginning to think it's probably the RAM that's limiting yeah, okay. here. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, it's fine. We have reached our goal of 4000 CL18. And yeah. for Flarex, I think it's a very, very good... Uh, very yeah, good. it's a very good overclock <laughs> considering that this isn't exactly very top tier RAM. This is like what I'll call the low to middle of the pack. Yeah, uh, we initially wanted to try Trident Z News, but I think this is easier to dispose of. All right, guys, so we have recovered our system. So apparently having fun doing this overclocking session kind of fucked our system, especially the ITX one. Because the problem with 
memory overclocking is, especially when the OS is loading, it could uh, corrupt certain things in the OS. So right now for the ITX, because we were pushing it very aggressively, the OS can't even load. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's always a good idea when you're testing your memory overclocks, please do not use your actual boot SSD with all your work <laughs> on it. It's always good to do it on a fresh install. So in case it screws up, you just redo and reinstall your OS operating system from scratch. We've said that you must have your OS ready also or a certain backup of whatever that you have. Yeah, I will highly recommend you back up your data before you <laughs> attempt this. For us, we can get away with it because they are both fresh installs. That's right. We managed to reach our end goal of 4000 CL18 for both systems. So we are very happy with that. I was actually very surprised. Generally, for a lot of consumers and all that, they think RAM is RAM. Yeah, but the thing is, even if you look at, let's say, a mid-tier RAM like this, like X3200 CL16, I was actually very surprised that it could actually hold 4000 MHz CL18. The RAM does have its limitation, and now we know it's 4000 CL18. That's right. Uh, if you want to overclock, yeah, you can use our numbers. I did have better luck with a 32 gig kit of Trident Z Neos, actually. Mm. Mm. Now, the surprising part is uh, when I tried this kit on these two, this guy, max it could go was 4266. Hmm. CL18 or 19. That guy could do 4400, but I had to pump about 1.7 volts in. How yeah. much is this kit? Oh, this guy, uh, I have to go and check. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll update you guys. My findings is that, yeah, if you have a higher speed kit like this 3600 CL16, then mm -hmm. yeah, you can probably see the difference between the two slot ITX and the four slot. So with that, beginner like me can easily learn RAM overclocking using memory. Try it. If you have a new system, make sure to overclock your RAM because yeah, you will get extra performance out of your work anyway. So yeah, might as well. Yeah. And uh, because when you buy your RAM, it doesn't come with the advertised RAM. So make sure you overclock to get the advertised RAM. Let's say, for example, you mm -hmm. bought this Lite Axis. Yeah, 3200. 3200 CL16. Mm -hmm. yes, you saw just now, the JDAC timing is actually 2400. Correct. Uh, that's the sure guaranteed will work timing. Yes. XMP is not a guarantee. Yeah. It sometimes may work, it sometimes may not work. Uh, that's the misconception a lot of people get. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, for these two sets, it's just we enable XMP and third, voila, you get 3200. Yeah, so might as well just overclock anyway. Might as well just uh, <laughs> enable XMP and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. You want to tell them about what GSQ send does? Ah, uh, no. We only bet to another video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they sent us a little present. Yeah, we have kind of like the ICBM of RAM, right? <laughs> because I was like looking through YouTube and I saw quite a number of YouTubers. They're all very enthusiastic about the RAM overclocking competition. Yeah, we're not very sure if they're going to join, but we can see there's actually quite a big competitive potential from the other countries. I saw what some of them were pulling out. <laughs> they were pretty good. They knew their stuff and all that. We're bringing in the ICBM. But that's another secret for another day. Yep, make sure to join this MSI memory try competition, especially you Singaporeans, show that we have the ability to do the same thing as the countries around us. Yeah, we must do our part. <laughs> that sure day is coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah, while we send a team to Olympics, we have our digital Olympics here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. We hope to see you next video, especially the next one I'm gonna mention, the ICBM video. So goodbye and good night, and thank you, Gordon, for teaching me. Mm.